This A-level IB biology video, as the name suggests, is all about global warming and the greenhouse effect. Now we're hearing more and more about global warming and the detrimental effect it's having on our planet, and I'm just going to talk you through the science that surrounds this. This all starts with the sun, and obviously the sun gives off radiation. And you can see with these arrows down here that there's the incoming solar radiation. Now the important thing to notice is that this incoming solar radiation is predominantly short wavelength. Now not all of that incoming solar radiation reaches the Earth's surface. In fact, 25% of it is absorbed in the atmosphere, where the ozone layer absorbs much of the ultraviolet component. The remaining 75% of the solar radiation reaches the Earth's surface. The next important step is that the surface of the Earth re-emits this radiation, but at much longer wavelengths. So you can see it being emitted over here. And this much longer wavelength means that it is now predominantly infrared, which remembers just heat. Now the fact that these waves have a longer wavelength means that they don't just pass out of the Earth's atmosphere and escape into space. Instead, they are trapped by a layer of gases, and these are greenhouse gases. And this is what's going on here. Only some of that radiation goes back out into space. Most of it gets absorbed by the greenhouse gases, which then reflect it back at the Earth's surface. And it's that reflection back at the Earth's surface which is what causes this huge warming and is therefore known as the greenhouse effect. So let's have another run through quickly of what's going on. We know that the sun gives off solar radiation. Notice that this is a short wavelength radiation. Some is absorbed by the ozone layer. Most of it reaches the Earth's surface. And then a lot of that radiation is absorbed and converted to heat. But actually what happens to some of it is that the Earth's surface re-emits this radiation but at a much longer wavelength. That longer wavelength means that only some of it is radiated out into space, and in fact most of it is absorbed by the greenhouse gases, which reflect that radiation back at the Earth's surface, so kind of giving the Earth a second hit of heat. And that's where we get the elevated temperatures from, and is known as the greenhouse effect. So what gases are responsible for producing this greenhouse effect? Well, they're known as greenhouse gases. The main one is carbon dioxide, you've also got water vapour, you've got methane and nitrogen oxides. Now in terms of how much of a warming effect these gases have, it depends on two things. Number one, their concentration within the atmosphere and number two, their ability to absorb long wavelength radiation. Now notice that methane has a great ability to absorb long wavelength radiation but is in low concentrations. CO2, however, has in comparison a poor ability to absorb long wavelength radiation, but it has a very high concentration in the Earth's atmosphere, and therefore carbon dioxide has a much larger greenhouse effect. So just to highlight, carbon dioxide and water vapour actually have the strongest effect, and then methane and nitrogen oxides have less of an effect. Just to point out about the ozone layer, it has no noticeable impact on the greenhouse effect and that's because it intercepts incoming shortwave radiation rather than the all-important outgoing longwave radiation and remember it's that outgoing long radiation which is what causes the greenhouse effect. Now in terms of the actual numbers Scientists have calculated that without the greenhouse effect, the mean, so the average Earth temperature, would be minus 18 degrees, so completely unlivable. With the greenhouse effect, we have an average temperature of actually 30 degrees, although well, not here in England, we're not getting that high temperature. Now, human activities are increasing the levels of greenhouse gases, leading to the enhanced greenhouse effect. Those sorts of activities include burning fossil fuels, deforestation, which releases locked up carbon in the form of carbon dioxide, rice paddy fields, which is a type of farming practice. They release a lot of methane, as does cattle farming, because when they burp, they release huge amounts of methane. 
And they're just a few examples of human activities which are increasing the concentrations of greenhouse gases. What effect does this have? Well, the big thing we're always talking about is global warming. Fundamentally, the average temperatures are increasing on the Earth's surface. And what happens as the Earth's surface gets warmer? Well, the polar ice caps, which contain a huge amount of ice, start to melt. Because the ice ends up as water in the sea, the sea levels rise. Rising sea levels mean that low-lying land is flooded. This leads to loss of habitat, so places to live for the animals, as well as general loss of biodiversity. It also has more unusual knock-on effects, such as causing changes in bird migration patterns. and extreme weather. We're seeing a large increase in the number of tropical storms, for example, particularly in places like Florida.